everyone. Today we are going to study about replication in prokaryotes. Now when we are talking now what is replication? Replication is simply a process by which the genetic material or the DNA in the cell is being doubled. And why do we need a replication? Replication is necessary because uh, when the daughter, new daughter cells are formed, they need a part of the parent, uh, parent DNA molecule. Okay, now uh, when we are talking about replication, three basic terms need to be defined. And these are semi-conservative nature of replication, semi-discontinuous and bidirectional nature. What do you mean by semi-conservative semi nature of a DNA replication? Now semi-conservative, when we talk about the parent molecule being replicated, the, uh, out of the both of the strands of the parent DNA molecule, one strand goes in the next generation and, and along with this one strand, a newly synthesized strand is being formed on this parent strand. So the daughter molecule, in short, receives one newly synthesized strand and one parental strand. And this is, this is uh, what you call as semi-conservative, that is a part of the parent molecule is being conserved. Okay, now secondly, semi-discontinuous nature. Semi-discontinuous nature, when we talk about replication, the two, the two DNA, the two parent strands, okay, now on one of the, one of the strands of the parent, uh, parent DNA molecule, the newly synthesized strand is continuous, whereas on the other DNA, on the, uh, another parent strand, the newly synthesized strand is discontinuous. That means, when you talk about the replication for, okay, these are the parent, uh, parent uh, DNA strands. Now, when we talk about replication, one strand is formed continuously. Okay, it, con it goes on in a continuous fashion, whereas the another strand, it, uh, it there, there are breaks or you can call it the gaps in between. And so this nature is called as a semi-discontinuous nature of DNA replication. Now third term, third term bi-direction. Bi means two and direction means there are two directions uh, of the, uh, replication. That is, when this replication fork in prokaryotes is being formed, the replication in a, uh, uh, proceeds on this direction as well as it proceeds, proceeds on the another direction as well. So you see there are two directions uh, and therefore we call it the bi-directional nature of the uh, DNA replication in prokaryotes. Now the replication, you have three, uh, three main steps of replication, initiation, elongation and termination. But before starting, we must be uh, thorough with some terms about replication. First term is replicon. What do you mean by replicon? Replicon is actually a part of the DNA, a part of the DNA strand which is capable of uh, synthesizing or initiating the DNA replication. So this replicon will have an origin site as well as a terminus site. Origin site. Now replication cannot uh, proceed or initiate at any place on the DNA strand. It proceeds and uh, initiates only at certain specific sequences. And these sequences are only known as the origin. So if we're talking about the replication in prokaryotes, this origin are known as ORIC. It's origin sites. So ORIC is an origin site for replication. Now along with replication, when the when the uh, entire molecule is being replicated, you need a site so that the termination can also take place. So this uh, the, the sequence which helps in termination is known as the terminus sequence. Okay. Now terminus sequence. At terminus sequence uh, in prokaryotes, this sequence can be called as ter. Now what? Uh, how does termination take place? We we'll talk about it first. During termination, there is a sequence over this uh, DNA strand, okay, which is called as the ter site. On this ter site, a protein known as the TUS, TUS gene, it comes and binds over this ter site, okay, and as it binds over this site, the replication fork which was being formed in the DNA which was being replicated till here stops and uh, the assembly is being, uh, you can say, destroyed. Uh, assembly is, uh, gets over, gets over. So now we talk about how the DNA replication mechanism takes place in prokaryotes. So, to proceed on with replication, you need certain enzymes for this, in prokaryotes especially. Like uh, first of all, this, as I said that replication initiates only at the origin site. So you need a protein which can identify this origin sequence. So this protein is known as DNA A. DNA A. This protein is uh, this protein works to, uh, uh, to recognize the ORI site, the ORI site, the ORI C in prokaryotes. Okay. Now, as well as uh, after recognition, you need that the two strands of the DNA molecule be separated. Be separated and this double strandedness should be converted into single stranded DNA. So, this single stranded, now this activity of breaking the hydrogen bonds in between the nitrogenous bases is, is known as the helicase activity. And in prokaryotes, the DNA B protein works as an uh, helicase enzyme, that is, it breaks the hydrogen bonds. Now, this DNA B does not uh, come over this place by itself, but it needs some carrier, or you can call it a loader, for a loader to come over this place or on the DNA strand so that it can convert the double stranded D 
DNA in this single stranded DNA. Okay, so this uh, the work of the uh, loader or helicase, the work of helicase loader is being done by DNA C protein. So DNA C works to bring the DNA B over this ORI site so that it can initiate or it can start breaking the hydrogen bonds in between, in between the DNA strands. Now after breaking of the hydrogen bonds, we need the, you need to start up with the replication process. So there is another problem in replication especially because as you know, uh, as we know that the enzyme which is the, uh, the DNA polymerase cell which is the main replicating enzyme cannot initiate the process of replication. It can elongate, it can synthesize long strands of DNA but it cannot initiate, initiate the process. So for initiation you, you require a primer to be formed, a primer and this primer will be formed by the enzyme DNA G. The DNA G it works, as a, it works as a primase that is it synthesizes the RNA primers over this DNA molecule and in short you can say this, this DNA G forms a primer so that DNA polymerase third can get a 3 dash free OH end. And as soon as the 3 dash free OH end is available to DNA polymerase third, it, 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 it elongates the process till the termination. Okay, and now as I said previously, this double strand is converted into single standard for application. So you need to stabilize as well these single standards are not stable enough. They, these, these, these hydrogen bonds as are broken can again be rejoined and again be formed. So to stabilize these single strands, we need a protein which stabilizes these uh, single stranded DNA called as the SSBP, the single stranded binding proteins. Okay, what does it, how does it work? That as soon as you break the hydrogen bonds, this SSBP comes, uh, comes and covers this nitrogen basis so that no further bond can be, no, uh, further bond cannot be formed between these nitrogen bases. So this is all about the enzymes that we need during the replication. Now we proceed on with the mechanism for replication. The step first, that is first of all this origin site or IC is being recognized by protein DNA A. As soon as DNA A comes, along with the DNA A comes DNA C which works as a helicase loader. Okay, helicase loader that is it brings the enzyme helicase or DNA B along with itself. Now DNA B, as soon as DNA B and C comes, work of DNA is finished. So it leaves the place and leaves the place and now, now these uh, DNA B works, uh, it's a helicase activity by cutting the hydrogen bond in between the two strands of the parent DNA molecule. As it cuts the uh, hydrogen bonds, the double stranded strand so gets converted into a single strand. Now this single strand needs to be stabilized. So for the stabilization, we have a protein. SSBB which comes and covers the single stranded nitrogenous bases so that they do not rejoin and combine again. Now this DNA B on both of the sides of the D, uh, of the parent DNA molecule moves and cuts the cuts uh, the hydrogen bonds in between. Okay. Now as soon as this single strand is being available, so first of all the primase or the DNA G comes, okay, and starts with the initiation process. And to explain the initiation process, we consider only this part of the DNA. Explain, but in uh, in reality, on both the sides of the DNA strand, the same thing is uh, proceeding or taking place. Uh, taking place. So now we take as as soon as we take this part of the DNA strand, we we assume is a we draw in this form and to show the replication foot and also the direction of the two DNA parent DNA strands. Now on either of the now on both of the parent DNA strands, the formation of RNA primer or primer takes place. With the help of DNA, with the help of protein DNA G. Okay, now as soon as this primers are being formed, then you have a 3 dash free OH end. So DNA polymerase can now come over this place and start on start on with the elongation process. Okay, so in the next step, we show the same thing. We show that on the parent strand with the direction 3 dash to 5 dash, you have the synthesis of a leading strand, whereas on the parent molecule with the direction 5 dash to 5 dash to 3 dash direction there is a synthesis of a legging strand okay so by by legging strands uh, we mean that the strands are being synthesized this in a discontinuous form and you have uh, the gaps in between okay and these fragments can be later on called as okazaki fragments and can be about 200 kilo base pairs long okay and afterwards these strands are then uh, the gap is being filled in between these strands uh, uh, and as well as this, uh, the ends are also joined with the help of the enzyme DNA ligase. Okay, so you have, uh, uh, so in short, you can say that during elongation process, there is synthesis of a leading strand as well as there is synthesis of a lagging strand, and the pro pro process proceeds on till you till you reach the third side. As soon as you reach the third side, 
the turn side as, as we have seen in the original molecule that there is an orion as soon as the termination takes place and the replication fork cannot proceed on further you have the formation of the carinated dna molecule where one of the strand was parental and the another strand was newly synthesized okay now this carinated dna needs to be separated so for this separation you have the enzyme dna gyrase the dna this dna gyrase it uh, breaks this carinated dna into two two strands of the dna molecule so this is how dna replication in prokaryotes takes place i hope this was helpful thank you